calling all builders. Welcome to Snowflake's five minute demo challenge, where contestants race against the clock to demo the latest and greatest Snowflake products and features. Our judges will rate the demos based on three criteria. How ambitious is the demo? Is the demo useful and replicable? And finally, how engaging and interactive was the demo? Each category is worth five points, and demos can rack up to a total of 15 points for a perfect score. And now your host, developer advocate, Philippa Hoffa. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. We are live. It's Thursday, January 18th for me, 10 a.m. And we are starting a new show. This is the Snowflake five-minute demo there, where we will have live five-minute demos, and they will be judged. And today is our first episode, and we have our first contestant. I want to introduce everyone to Jeff Holland, a product manager at Snowflake. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm great. I'm so pumped up. I mean, I'm watching this video of the challenge, and it's like, bring it on. Let's do this. Let's see what we can do. I know. I'm super pumped up, too. Uh, you know that we are going to judge your demo. We want to know if it's useful. We want to know if you did a fun presentation, and we want to know if uh, useful, fun, and ambitious. How much can you do in five minutes? And you will only have five minutes to do so. Uh, what did you prepare for us today? Uh, okay, well, we're we're starting with some fun stuff here. So for, for those of you who I haven't met yet, I'm Jeff Holm. I'm a product manager at Snowflake, and I get to help with Snowpark and a lot of the things around developers and developer platforms. So today, I wanted to give everybody a little flavor of Snowpark Container Services. This is one of our newest offerings. It just was released in AWS Public Preview back in December, so about a month ago. So I wanted to see if in five minutes, we can get a custom large language model, an LLM, running inside of Snowflake connected to our data. So I can explain the scenario before we start the timer, but that's that's what we're going to be showing here in just a minute. Perfect. So we're going to do LLMs in mm, Snowflake, right. in LLMs containers. in Snowflake, in containers. And you will do it in only five minutes. Five minutes, or else, you know, I, I guess I leave in shame. I don't, I don't know what happens if I can't pull it off in five minutes, but I'm ready for the challenge. Oh yes, and we have judges that are oh. ready to judge your demo. Uh, <laughs> let me intro you to our judges today, Gilberto. Uh, we also have Daniel Myers, and we have Nick Akin Gillard. Thank you, judges. You have a very important job today. Uh, you are going to judge Jeff live five minute demo. Um, Nick, what are you looking for today? Um, I'm looking for a cool factor, uh, how applicable it is for real world and the presentation style, which kind of Jeff nails it, but oh well. Uh, but you are you, going by to the judge. way, is this judging on how much fun I have building it and using Snowflake, or is this how much fun you all have watching it? As a both, I would say. <laughs> yes. Daniel, what are you looking for today? Great question. You know, I am looking for something that is really going to be extremely useful that I can that I can use with my data. Um, you know, Jeff, you mentioned that you're going to be doing this Snowpark Container Services, LLMs. Um, you know, I'm excited to see what you have today and um, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. And what about Gilberto? For me, what is going to be uh, super important is demonstrating ease of use. Um, so I, that's something I'll keep an eye on just because I think uh, this is such a neat feature. LLMs are also super cool. So how could we easily do this with Snowflake? I'm going to be keeping an eye out for that. I like it. By the way, I will, because this is our first episode, we have Jeff as the contestant. Uh, we happen to all know Jeff. We love how he demos. <laughs> now, we are opening this up to anyone that wants to bring us a demo. May you be a Snowflake employee, a Snowflake partner, a Snowflake user, a creator. We want to give everyone the opportunity to bring their demos, be judged, show what they have. So, yes, we are starting at a really good place and we want better. Can anyone be more fun, more entertaining, more useful, more 
uh, ambitious at what Jeff is going to do. And so looking Jeff, at the comments, there's much cooler people than I am who are already commenting. So, and you're saying they have a chance that they get to hang out with you all if they submit a submission for for the challenge and they get to come uh, sit in the hot seat. Yes, everyone will have this opportunity. Uh, I hope you give us now the gold standard of what everyone should try to improve. But let's see if it goes well. This is life, so anything can fail. Let's test what the demo gods have for us today. Now, Jeff, before we start, how we will know that your demo is complete? Uh, I will either celebrate and I'll be like, it's working, we did it. I mean, you'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll explain here a little bit of the scenario that we're gonna demo for before we start the timer. Uh, but if I'm able to get the LLM connected to my data, pulling out value across all of my Snowflake data, I'll give a great thumbs up, I'll be like, we did it. And if that timer hits zero, I didn't pull it off. And if there's a terrible technical glitch, we do have the backup video of shame. I don't know if other people do this, it doesn't have to be the backup video of shame. But for me, we will at least show the backup video of shame of this working as expected. But we're going to do this all live. Like you'll see here, I'll be typing. I'll probably make typos. My heart is beating after the pump up video of like the take the challenge. My yeah. I don't know what it is, 120 right now. Uh, so we'll see. Everybody will know if this if this flopped or, or uh, flew. Exactly. This is live. This is risky because it's live. You, we are going to see if you can get data out of an LLM connected to your data in Snowflake, all running in Snowflake. Are you ready to start the timer or is there anything? Let's, you want uh, actually, to set let's up share my screen really quick and I'll walk everybody through so they can follow along. So we'll pop up my screen and then mm -hmm. I'll tell you in just a second when to start the timer. Uh, so this won't be part of the, the demo. This is just so everybody knows what to watch out for. That's so, enough. excellent. I, I'm, yeah, I mentioned we're going to be using LLMs. Uh, let me share a little bit of even why when you're using Snowflake, you might be interested in LLMs or custom LLMs. So here's the scenario here I've got a table inside of my Snowflake account. You can see this is called the customer support transcript table. Um, wow, I'm already having glitches where I can't even scroll this up. I'm so nervous. I can't even get this screen. <laughs> so imagine, you know, you call up uh, Delta or whoever and you're like, hey, I need to change my flight. I have an issue. So this table has all of those transcripts. Now, this is just like a bunch of the data that you might have floating around in your own Snowflake account that has a bunch of data hiding in it. Because there's a bunch of really valuable business info hiding inside of things like a customer support transcript. But I can't tell, and, and as you're watching live, you probably cannot see as I'm scanning through this, you know, what's this call about? What was the root cause? Is the customer happy or sad? Uh, is there a trend between all of these different chat logs that I have saved here? So in just a second here, we're gonna start a timer. And the challenge that I have is to bring a custom LLM. There's a lot of cool ways to run LLMs in Snowflake, Cortex, some great announcements. Here, we wanna bring a custom open source LLM I'm gonna bring it from the ecosystem. I'm gonna be using Hugging Face, which is like the world's largest collection of ML and AI models. And we're gonna see if in within five minutes, I can get an AI model, an LLM running securely in my Snowflake account, connected to my data, and actually extracting much more valuable info from all of these transcripts. So that's the challenge. I've got five minutes to do it. That seems like a lot. And all I'm starting with here is my table with the data that I need to process. So five minutes isn't a lot of time, Felipe, but I'm, I'm ready to go whenever we wanna start the timer. I love it. I think it's time to start the timer. All right, we're off. So the first things first, I need to get my model. I mentioned we're gonna be using Hugging Face. I'm gonna be using Llama 2, which is an open source LLM from Meta, free and open. So I'm gonna pull that in to my container that I can run within Snowflake. So I've switched over to Visual Studio Code. This is here a Docker file. This is like the recipe for how I want to build my container. I'm gonna tell it to integrate with that Llama 2 LLM. Now with containers, there's two steps that I need to do. The first one is I need to build the container. This is like cooking that recipe. It's taking all of the steps of the code I needed to run this LLM and running through it. And once I've built that container, I can go ahead and now push it to my Snowflake account or publishing it. So now this container that has that LLM model is now being pushed to my Snowflake account. 
So I now have a container that's registered in my Snowflake account. How do we get it up and running? I mentioned we're going to be using Snowpark Container Services. This lets me run any container easily in my Snowflake account. So here, let's call this our Llama 2 service. I need to define here a compute pool for the container to run on. Uh, here, I'm going to let it know I need to run on some GPUs. I'm actually going to do NVIDIA accelerated GPUs. And all I have to define here is what's called a spec. The spec is just a few lines of YAML that tell Snowflake you know, how to start up the container, what ports it might be listening onto, and that's it. So you can see here now, we have now that Llama 2 container running in our Snowflake account. Now, this is great. I can talk to this in Snowflake through a number of different interfaces, through SQL, through REST API. I could even do something now with an LLM in Snowflake, like create this Streamlit app. Ooh, first technical difficulty was I, my Streamlit app timed out. Let's refresh it. That's going to shave a few seconds off the clock. Let's go ahead in Snowflake and say, you know, why do Snowflake users love Snowflake? So here I'm talking to Streamlit in Snowflake. This is an interface that, oh, wow, first glitch here. Uh, I'm actually going to, how am I doing on time? 2.52, I'm going to have time. Let's try this again. Why do Snowflake users love Snowflake? Looks like my stream lit up, timed out. Anyway, what would normally be happening here is that it would be responding back with that response to this question. Uh, but what's cool here is that it's not actually talking to something like OpenAI or ChatGPT. This stream it app can actually talk to the LLM that I have running in my Snowflake account. Oh my goodness, timed out. <gasps> this is gonna be, the pressure is gonna be on here. We might have to go to the backup video. Let's keep going and see if everything is up and running like I wanted it to. Uh, let's keep moving though. Let's assume the Streamlit app itself was having its own moment. Uh, here, I'm gonna do a quick check here. I am, yeah, the Streamlit app is running. Okay. Let's forget about Streamlit. Let's move now to SQL, because that's OK. At the end of the day, I need this to talk to my data. So I'm going to create a SQL function to talk to my LLM. So here, we're going to say create function. I'm going to create an LLM function. LLMs usually take something called a prompt, which is some text. I'm going to have this some return some text. But what I'm going to tell Snowflake to do is when I call this function, just send the data to my Llama 2 service. And here I have an endpoint, which I'll call chat, which is the actual endpoint that I want this to talk to. So here I've gone ahead and created that custom function. So here I could now integrate this with SQL. So for the sake of time, I've only got a minute left. Let's connect this to our transcript data. So check out what I can do now. I can say select transcript LLM, and I'll tell the LLM, given the following transcript, return a JSON object semi-structured with the following properties. We want the call summary. We want the root cause of the issue. And we want to know the ending customer sentiment. Uh, and so now I'm going to pass this all in with the transcript. And let's do it from that table that we were looking at a little bit earlier. And let's just do this with one record for now to make sure that it's working, because now I'm I'm actually worried that my container did not start up the way that I wanted it to. So let's see now if our LLM is going to work or if we're going to have to switch to the backup to see this LLM running. Oh my goodness, the pressure's really on. I just ran this through a second ago. We have 25 seconds to go. Oof, this is taking a little bit longer than it was supposed to. I cannot believe this. I must have done something wrong with my LLM container. We might have to switch to the backup here in a second. But what should be happening ooh, is that we would see the LLM responding back. Oh, my goodness. There is a hiccup here, you guys. Something happened with my LLM. It's not responding back. The timer's going to go on our first. This is shocking. My my container, I did something wrong. I don't know what I did, but that's okay. I know there's a bunch of you watching here. Now you get to watch what happens when you're on the hot seat and something fails because Felipe, I need you to pull up the video of shame so that we can watch what should have happened. We could even skip to the part where I opened the Streamlit app, which is like at the halfway mark, and we can see what happened. But I, I could not pull it off. This was too big of a challenge for me, I guess. The, the pressure was well, too far on and I did something wrong with that Docker file, I think. Something happened here, and on one hand, it's not the best result. On the other hand, I love it because this is our first episode, and it's showing everyone that we are really doing live demos and that the stakes 
are high. Before we show off the video, uh, I want the judges to chime in. Um, do we start with Daniel or with Nick? Yeah. Nick, unmuted first. Oh, my. All right. Um, man, I would give uh, Ambition, uh, I don't know, six or seven out of five. <laughs> Maybe too high Ambition. I know. That was, uh, I mean, I'm, I was impressed. Uh, that's Docker containers, LLMs, and all that stuff. And within five minutes, well, typing the whole thing in real time yeah i know i wouldn't be able to do that so um the real life i think you know cool factor is definitely there i will say four just to leave some room for improvement um i guess what was the last one the engagement uh, yeah that's five <laughs> there's um so i'll get well, it, it, was not, it was not completed so we cannot put this on our leaderboard but still okay. uh even without the scores, it's good knowing what well, what did you think? Hey, it's all about you know the de developer uh, life. Um, I guess stories of developer, right? If it worked the first time, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> these are the, this is the text, and this is what everyone is signing up for. Daniel, what did you think? Yeah, so I would say uh, you know ambition was was off the charts i think that when you're especially when you're in the hot seat like that uh, five minutes is not a lot of time um and uh you know i think that uh you know showing it uh in this way was was something that uh, would have been awesome to see um but i am looking forward to seeing the the, the video of shame you know to, to see how to see it see it running um uh, yes and uh, how about you gilberto yeah, so going with ambition, relevance, and engagement, I'll go five, four, and four. I just thought the ambition was through the roof, as you all saw. Uh, five minutes, not a lot of time to do to do what Jeff was trying to do. I thought it was very relevant with LLMs and Snowpark Container Services, and the use case was also very relevant. Um, engagement, I was super engaged. I would have loved to have seen it uh, be completed, but I knocked off a point there. So I did five, four, and four. Yes, and we have comments also from our audience. Uh, it's okay. We I love that someone is saying you did make a sacrifice to the demo gods, and this is all the good of the show, Jeff. But for the good I of forgot, I even mentioned on Twitter yesterday I needed to, and last <laughs> night it started snowing in Seattle, and I completely forgot to do the sacrifice to the demo gods. Now at least I know the root cause while I'm trying to figure out what else happened with that LLM. <laughs> yeah. It'll be, no, it'll because be a comma everyone somewhere. here. Sorry, I was gonna say it'll pro it's probably a comma somewhere. Yes, <laughs> because everyone here wants to watch a demo. We have a recording, so we're going to show the demo, and then we, after we show the video, we can come back to see if the audience has any questions, and maybe Jeff can tell us exactly what happened during the live live demo i'll figure it out yeah and if you want the you can skip in the video right when i switch to the stream it up that's where whatever reason something went wrong here so and that'll cut down some of the time it should just be about like you saw two more minutes and i even did the pre-recording live too well i mean live at the time there were no edits so let's check it out let's yeah. so so you can see what it was supposed to look like while i wallow in shame yes all right, everyone. So let's take a look now how you can bring LLMs into Snowflake and run them securely with your data in just a few minutes. So why are we going to want to do this? Let me walk you through the scenario quickly here. So here we have a table in our Snowflake account. This is customer support transcript. So imagine an airline, you know, you call up Delta or you get on a live chat and you're like, hey, I have an issue with my flight. I need to change it, whatever else. So this table has all the data for a bunch of transcripts like that. Now, one of the challenges here is it's really hard for me to look at this transcript and pull out the insight here. Um, like, what are the trends between these transcripts? What is the root cause? What is, what is the customer even talking about? There's a lot of very valuable data that is hiding here in these transcripts. So we're gonna use AI and open source LLM to actually extract the business value from these transcripts. I'm gonna pull an open source model from Hugging Face, run it in my Snowflake account, connect it to the data, but as if that wasn't a challenge enough, I'm gonna do it in only five minutes. So let's go ahead and see if we can pull this off. I'll go ahead and start the timer now. So first things first, I need that open source model. I'm gonna come here to Hugging Face. I'm gonna use Meta's Llama 2 LLM. This is a free and open source LLM, super capable for a number of, of text tasks. 
In Visual Studio Code, I have what's called a Docker file. This is how I will containerize my work. This is like the recipe for how to build my container. So I have here, I'm connecting it to that Hugging Face model, and I'll go ahead now and do what's called building my container image. This is like cooking that recipe. So once I've built the container that I need, I can go ahead now and publish it or push it to my Snowflake account. So now Snowflake, my Snowflake account, has access to the container that has the code, in this case, the model that I wanna run. Okay, well now that the container is there, how do I run it? So with Snowpark Container Services, the thing that I can create is called a service. Uh, let's call the service Llama2. Here I can define a compute pool, which is the profile that I wanna run this on. I'm gonna choose some NVIDIA accelerated GPUs. And the last thing that I need to define here is what's called a spec. This is just a few lines of YAML code I could show you in a second that lets Snowflake know how to run the container, what ports it's listening on. It's just a few very simple lines. So just that easy now, I have that Llama2 service running. This is now running my container. It's running that model. Very interesting, how do I connect to it? Well, in Snowflake, I could connect via SQL, REST API, even build something like a Streamlit app. So this is a Streamlit app in Snowflake, and check this out. Uh, why do Snowflake users love Snowflake? So here I'm asking our model a question. It's responding in real time. This looks a lot like a chat GPT, but this isn't connected to OpenAI. This Streamlit app is actually talking to that model that we deployed to run a few seconds ago. Pretty slick. But for our scenario, we don't need this running in a chat app. We actually need it connected to our data. Let's do a quick time check here. Okay, two minutes down, three minutes to go. Let's actually connect this now to our data. Okay, so we created the service. To connect it to SQL in our table, I now need to create the function, the SQL function. So let's say create function LLM. And this function will take in a prompt, which is some text, and it's gonna return some text. But here I'm gonna tell Snowflake, hey, when I call this SQL function, actually just send the data to that Llama2 service. The last thing I have to define here is what's called the endpoint. This is just the port. Uh, that my container's listening on that SQL can send that data to. So I could do something fun here, like say select LLM, you know, tell me about foo. Uh, not super useful to talk to an LLM through SQL alone, but watch what I can do now. So let's say select transcript. Here I'm gonna call that LLM function, but I'm gonna give it some command. Given the following transcript, return a JSON object with the following properties. Uh, let's say summary, uh, root cause, and ending customer sentiment. So I'm giving it some data. I'm gonna pass in that transcript. Let me finish writing this really quickly here too. And limit one, I'll tell you what it's doing while it runs. Okay, I had to type that quickly before we ran out of time. So what this is doing now is I'm passing in that transcript to our LLM, but I'm giving it a command. I'm saying, take that really long blurb of text, return a semi-structured JSON object with a few very useful pieces of info. So here was my original really long, hard to parse transcript. Let's take a look at our much more simplified one, our LLM powered one. Check that out. Here's a very simple summary. This was the root cause, and I can see what the ending customer sentiment was. Super cool. I could obviously go in, fine tune this prompt or, or prompt engineer this a bit more, but the last step, I'm just gonna remove limit one process all of my transcripts with that LLM, and better yet, I still have 54 seconds to spare with taking an open source LLM and connecting it to my data in Snowflake. None of my data here is leaving Snowflake. I'm sending it securely to a model running in my account. Super, super cool. The amount of things that you can do in Snowflake with Snowpark, our secure data cloud platform, Give this a shot yourself. If you're interested in trying this out, you can run through the same sample that I just did. I published it on GitHub. Check it out, github.com slash snowflake dash labs. There's a repo there called Snowpark Containers Llama 2 Sample. It gives you all the info you need to run the same thing in your Snowflake account on the Snowpark Container Services public preview. Thanks so much. It looks great when it works. Yeah, and as the recording shows, that worked yesterday at 5.40 p.m. when you recorded it. Uh, I'm so glad we have a backup for the live demos. 
I love the risk of life demos. I love. I do too. Fun. You know, so I I found I found. Uh, it looks like I might have actually had two issues. By the way, I think uh, someone in uh -huh. chat pointed out the one. I think when I did it live, I was so nervous after the stream that I didn't add limit one. So it was trying to do the first one across all my records. I, I very well might have done that. But I looked through the logs. It's all working fine now. By the way, because uh, Snowflake uh -huh. is so easy. When so my when my LLM moment. starts up, yeah, when my LLM starts up, the first thing it does is it goes to talk to Hugging Face to get the model. And for whatever reason, because of the fates that be, that call failed. It said like unable to talk to Hugging Face. There was some hiccup in the whatever. And so then the container was just stuck starting up for a long time. So I just restarted it. I dropped the container and created it again. And now it's running fine. So anyway, a lot of fun though, a lot of fun. And thank you all very much for the kind words and comments. And as mentioned too, all of the stuff that I showed, the working version, all of it I published to GitHub. So if you want to go run through this and you want to mm -hmm. give this a shot yourself in the Snowpark Container Services public preview, github.com slash snowflake dash labs. There's a repo called Snowpark Containers Llama 2 Sample that will work. It'll work for you every single time, but a ton <laughs> of fun. Thank you everyone for sticking around and watching the, the recorded version, the single take recorded version where you could see how it was supposed to work. I love it. And I love that you were able to debug it so quickly. Um... I have a couple of questions here. Uh, is there any networking step for the chat app to talk to the new LLM behind a Docker container? So because in uh, because all of the things I had talking to the LLM were in Snowflake, so the stream it app was running in Snowflake, the SQL function was running in Snowflake, I didn't have to worry about any networking. This is actually one of the wonderful things about Snowpark Container Services is we know the things that are talking to each other. It's all in my Snowflake account. So all of the networking configuration, private, whatever else, it's all running in my Snowflake account. So I don't have to worry about any of that. Now, if I do need to talk to an outside source, if there is some outbound uh, internet traffic or I want to talk to an external source, then you can set up. Uh, it's the same if you use Snowpark. We have these external network integrations where you do need to configure and say, like, hey, I'm okay to talk to these endpoints. Uh, these ones are on the allowed list. Uh, but like the stream it app and the SQL function, I didn't have to worry about networking. I just ran the container and those things were able to securely communicate. Yes, so the connection to Hugging Face was from your computer? Over, that was, yeah. So that's the one ah. part where when I'm doing the initial download, and that's where I had the hiccup. That's where the hiccup uh -huh. was. Ah, so if we had Snowflake <laughs> connected to Hugging Face, that would be an external connection. That could be a different thing. That's right. But that's right. the hiccup yep. was in the local connection. Good. And the last question I have here to, from Meher Kohli. Why did we not have checkpoints to make sure the container is up? Now, he loves that you could make things work with 10, 15 lines of code and ease of sure, integration. Yep. As you're saying, all the networking was taken care of uh, because everything is running inside Snowflake. Yeah, so there are uh, there's a few things here at play behind the scenes. One of them is we uh, actually, a, a side note for folks who know, if, if you're in the container landscape at all, you might've heard of some, some technology called Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is like the industry standard way of running reliable containers at scale. Super powerful technology. I love, love Kubernetes. Um, been using it for a number of years. Challenge with Kubernetes is it's a real complex thing to go and build and manage. But I mentioned that because actually behind the scenes, when those containers are running, we are running them on Kubernetes behind the scenes. And why I bring that up to the question is that gives us a lot of features out of the box where your containers will automatically auto heal when there are failures. So when my container crashes, we'll be able to auto heal. You can have what are called health probes. You can create even for some of the state of your container, things like checkpoints when you want. So those features are there, but because we only had a five minute window, none of them kicked in to a point where it was able to remedy my own hiccups. Uh, but there actually is behind the scenes, a bunch of stuff to make your containers more reliable and auto heal. And the good part is for me as a data engineer, data scientist, app developer, I just have to tell Snowflake, you know, create my service and we'll just automatically apply all those steps. So there's a bit there, definitely worth poking around. If you go into the Snowflake documentation, you can read some of the, those surfaces and how to do things like health probes and readiness probes that you can expose on your container to make those health checks and auto healing work. Perfect. Cool. Um, one last question before we say goodbye and invite everyone to bring their own demos to the show. We want to open this up. Uh, I have 
um, Basam asking about, Basam El Kosa asking about what is the cost of NVIDIA GPU instance mm -hmm. that you use with the Llama model? You were using NVIDIA GPUs inside the stuff. So that's super I cool. was, yep. So you can check it out. We have it all posted with the public preview in terms of like there's a per certain credit. We also have a number of types. Because I was using Llama 7 billion, I was able to use the smallest NVIDIA GPU. It's an A10G GPU. Uh, I don't know the number off the top of my head on how many credits that it is. Uh, all managed running securely in my account. But we even have some like big, massive, like eight core or eight GPU instances where you can run the massive, like 70 billion parameter LLMs if you want. And worth noting to this question, if you're just looking to send data to an LLM like I was, and it's not customized, you don't need an open source one, Cortex Functions is the easiest way you can do it because then you don't even have to run and worry about running your own GPU. You just say snowflake.ml.complete and we will run on some LLMs that we have running already for you. So another option worth noting if you're in the GPU space and feel free to check out our docs where we'll, where we'll share more on the, on the credits for all these instances. Beautiful. So three last comments, no more questions, but Mahesh uh, wants us to share the GitHub URL in the chat. I think we did on YouTube. Uh, we need to put it on LinkedIn too. Uh, Sanjay Katimani says that this was an awesome demo. Thanks, Jeff Holland, for showing how easy it is to use LLMs in Snowflake. Uh, Lou says that it's better for them that Snowflake manages Kubernetes. Yes, uh, this was found. Uh, and hey, hey, huge, huge thank you to the viewers for being so patient and forgiving while I will end this call and crawl up on the couch behind me and cry for a oh, few no. minutes. I'm glad to know that you all didn't uh, throw the pitchforks and tomatoes at me. We've all been on your seat. We all feel for you. And I'm so grateful <laughs> that you decided to take the risk because this show is about the risk. This show is about making it fun, about making it useful. And taking risks. And with that, I want to invite our friends to be part of this. Send us your five minute demos, send us your videos. We will choose the best. Uh, we will have a leaderboard. We will bring the best to maybe summit in San Francisco, who knows? Uh, but for now, it's time to close the show. Thank you, everyone. Want to be featured on our show? Submit a video of you successfully completing a functioning demo within five minutes. Furthermore, demos must be technical, original, and showcase existing Snowflake features.